In this video, we'll be looking at page 559, number 28. Pause the video and read that question thoroughly. A part says, was this an experiment? No, it wasn't an experiment. We didn't apply a treatment to these people, to the women. We got there after the fact. Okay, so, no, it wasn't an experiment. Okay, in the experiment we apply, apply treatment. No treatment was applied. We got there after the fact and took some information on something that already occurred. This situation was an observational study. An experiment requires a treatment. B. Test an appropriate hypothesis and state your conclusion in context. Well, we're going to use our hypotheses model mechanics conclusion outline. First hypothesis. <clears throat> in the hypotheses section, we're going to state our hypotheses in symbols and in words and state our significance level. We want to state our H0 and our HA. Well, our null hypothesis for our two sample proportions is simply the two proportions are equal. And I'm going to say the proportion that um, suffered from air pollution, P sub A is the proportion that suffered from air pollution, and P sub N A is no air pollution. Okay, that's our null hypothesis. Our alternative is one is going to be um, greater than, less than, or not equal to the other. Well, the question says a higher proportion of low birth rates. So what we're trying to show is, is this group greater than this group? Where P is the proportion of low birth weight babies. When we use these descriptive subscripts like this, we don't have to dis distinctively identify both of these. If you read the question, it would be pretty clear that this P sub A would be the proportion that suffered from um, air pollution, and P sub N A is no air pollution. All right, and we're going to define an alpha in the problem. It doesn't tell us an alpha, so let's um, go with our default of 0 0.05. Model. In our model section, we're going to state what test we're conducting and then check the conditions. So our test is a um, two-proportion z-test. Our generic conditions are random, normal, and independent. I'm going to put independent second because the normal condition is going to take a little checking here. <clears throat> okay, the most important condition is random. So it does not state that there that this is a random sample, so we we cannot be sure that we can generalize our results. We want to say some of that effect. Not stated. Proceed with caution. That is, we 
we might not be able to necessarily generalize our results. Independent. Now we we've talked about our 10% condition before. That still holds true, but we're not when we're dealing with a two sample test. The bigger thing here will be are the two samples independent of one another. And in this case, yes, um, the 182 babies that were born after they received the pollution, they're certainly going to be independent of the 2,300 whose mothers had not been um, near the site. So I, I, I feel we can confidently say these two groups are independent. The two groups are independent. You might argue that they're, they're, they're not, that maybe there was something else going on, the, um, some other characteristic that the people near the, the um, pollution would have had some other kind of characteristic as opposed to the, the groups outside of it. But in, in our case here, I think it's, it's okay to say that our two groups are independent. Normal. Well, our previous normal condition um, was our n times p hat greater than equal to 10 and n times the complement greater than or equal to 10. Now we have two different groups and we need those all to be bigger than 10. So we're, we need to say that our n for our air pollution group times that particular p hat is greater than or equal to 10 and the complement, I'm going to call that one Q. All of these groups need to be greater than or equal to 10. And then for my no pollution group, N times the no pollution group, P hat of that group, and the sample size of the no pollution group times the p hat pardon me times the q hat all these need to be greater than or equal to 10 Well, I could show all of these particular multiplications, but what I'm going to do, since all of these numbers are much larger than 10, I'm just going to go to the smallest such one, all right? It said 8% of the 182 babies for the, the um, pollution group, so that's my successes, all right? It's 182 times 0 0.08. So we have 182 times 0 0.08. Is that greater than 10? Well, that's approximately 16. Actually, I think it's closer to 15, but let's just call it 16. Is it greater than or equal to 10? So that holds. And it's the smallest of the four values, so the rest of them are going to be greater as well. Smallest of the four quantities. All right, so that's our normal condition. Again, we're using the p hat and not our null p because we don't have a fixed value for your, our null p. We're just assuming that the two proportions are equal to each other. When we did our one sample test, we did have some fixed null proportion. Here we're just saying these two numbers are equivalent. All right. Next, mechanics. In our mechanics section, we're going to state our um, null distribution. The test statistic. and the p-value. Okay. For our two 
<clears throat> for our two sample test we're going to skip the construction of the null distribution in the mechanics. You certainly need to be able to construct the null distribution. You certainly need to be able to understand specifically about the standard deviation. All right. And so check the example on page 550, 551. Page 551. This will specifically talk about calculating the standard deviation or the standard error of our statistic. Okay, but just in terms of us reducing the amount of things we're having to write here, for our two sample tests, we're going to omit that null distribution. So all we need is our test statistic and our p-value. Well, we know the test stat is going to be a z, okay, and we can simply use our calculator to find this value. So coming to our calculator, we will go to stat, then tests then two proportion z test okay in our first group this is our air pollution group how many successes do we have it doesn't give us a specific count it says eight percent so i'm going to find eight percent of 182 simply by doing the multiplication we get this non-integer we need to make it an integer 14.56 well let's go ahead and round up even though that's a little disturbing that it's so close to the middle there so let's go 15 here out of our total of 182 All right. the second group it says we have four percent so four percent of 2300 92 so our total is 2300 and we're ready to calculate alright our test statistic is 2.71 that's a lot of standard deviations out there and the associated p-value it's going to be pretty low point zero zero three all right we see that is our first p hat eight percent our second p hat um, four percent and then our total p hat this is the combined the pooled p hat point zero four three percent if it was treated as one sample like we did with the pennies example first proportion second proportion pool proportion right lastly we're going to state our conclusion in our conclusion we compare conclude context since our p-value is less than alpha, our p-value is low, reject the hoe. Our p-value is 0 0.003, our alpha is 0 0.05. Since p-value is less than alpha, we reject H0. There's my compare and my conclude context the data suggests HA and HA is the air pollution babies have a greater percentage of being underweight the data suggests the proportion of underweight babies are greater when their mothers were exposed to when exposed to air pollution before their birth in the womb prenatal
Compare p value less than alpha. Conclude reject h naught. Context the data suggests, and this is HA, the proportion of underweight babies are greater when exposed to air pollution. All right. That is number 28, and it's virtually identical to, very similar to 27. You should be able to handle that now.